Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Today we're looking at a data set of hand gestures. Actually, it's a tabular hand gesture data from eight different sensors. Um, I think eight readings from each sensor, so for a total of 64 readings. Um, if, if we, uh, oh yeah, I can see all the columns here. And at the very end, we have a um, gesture class column, which is the label column. So it's going to be a multi-class classification problem. Uh, you can see that each class has its own CSV file, so we're going to have to put them together into one uh, data frame. Uh, but let's get into it. So, um, I, I, if you read, actually, if you read the um, description, it says uh, zero means rock, one is scissors, two is paper, and three is the OK sign. So we have four different gestures we're trying to predict or classify, and we're going to use TensorFlow to do it. Uh, I'm importing numpy pandas matplotlib uh, dot pyplot and seaborn uh, just as some basic libraries and then standard scalar and train test split function uh, from sklearn for pre-processing uh, I'm using tensorflow and then for the for evaluating the model's performance I'm going to use classification report and confusion matrix alright so let's load those in and then get the data using pandas uh, dot read csv but I'm actually I need to get each one separately to start there's four different CSV files, and I get the file path of one of them by copying over here. Now let's create this empty list called DFs for data frames. And for label in zero, and I'm making these strings on purpose, one, two, and three, uh, we'll append to the D at the empty list pandas.readcsv, and I'm pasting in the file path for the zero.csv. Except instead of zero, I'm going to um, I'm going to add the label in between. So it's going to load in uh, four different CSV files each time with a different file path given by zero, one, two, or three in the place of the uh, number. So let's load that, and if we take a look at DFs, you'll see. Um, it's a, uh, well, actually, let me just do df sub 0 so we can see that's one data frame. df sub 1 is another data frame. And each one corresponds to a different class. And you can see we still have the class column here. Uh, so then uh, another thing I noticed is that they all have different uh, column names. This one, and you can see they're not actually values. Uh, this is like negative 4.0.6, which doesn't match up with the kinds of values we have in here. So we're just going to rewrite the names so that they all have the same names. Um, and to do this, we'll say uh, for df and dfs, so for each one of these dfs in our list, df.columns equals, uh, it's going to be a range, so I'm just going to make it 0 through 64, because there are 64 col 65 columns. Uh, so it's going to be a range of length uh, df.columns, length of df.columns. So a range with the length of the number of columns. And I'm going to turn that into a list, and that will be our new columns to overwrite. Now, if we look at this, uh, now if we look at the first data frame, it just has this index sort of numbering from 0 to 64. The uh, second data frame has exactly the same, and, and the uh, third data frame, and so on. So because they now have the same column names, we can concatenate them together and create a single data frame, which I will call data. And data will be pandas.concat. Now we're going to pass in a bunch of data frames to concatenate, and that's going to we're going to use li list comprehension to just say uh, df for df and dfs. So every data frame in the list, and we're concatenating along axis zero, so that means on top of each other instead of side by side. And any time, uh, well, because they have this duplicate indices, we're going to reset the index after so that it it's all has one index. And I'm going to include drop equals true so that we don't get the old indices as a new column. Now let's look at data. We now have 11,674 rows, same 65 columns, but now our class, our label column, which is column 64, really the 65th column, uh, has zeros, ones, twos, and threes. Uh, so this will be shuffled later. We don't have to worry about that right now. Um, but let's see if we have any missing values. So I'm going to print out the total missing values, and then to get the the um, total number. I'm just going to do data.isna.sum 
dot sum. So uh, data dot is an A will just give us the trues and falses. If there's a given, if there's a missing value in a spot, we'll have a true. So if we then sum over the rows, we'll get the number of missing values in each column. And if we sum over the columns after that, we'll get the total number of missing values, which comes out to be zero. So we have a fully numeric, clean, um, completely filled in data set. No worries there. Well, now let's split and scale the data. So uh, I'm going to split it into X and Y. Y will be what we're trying to predict, which is the label column. So it's going to be uh, data sub 64. So the column name is 64. Dot copy. Make a copy of it. And then X is going to be what we're using to try to predict the Y column. Will be data dot drop 64 from X is 1. We'll make a copy of that as well. So this is just this column, and X is everything else. Now we'll create a scalar. This is a standard scalar from sklearn. And we just want to scale the x. So x equals scalar dot fit transform x. And this will give each column in x a uh, mean zero and univariance. All right, and now let's split into train and test sets. So x train x test y train y test equals train test split. That's the function from sklearn. Passing an x, y, giving it a train size of 70% and including a random state of uh, 100. Uh, this is just so that we get the same results every time we split. Although it's not necessary. Let's go ahead and start training. Okay, so let's uh, let's see how what are the shape of our input is. Um, well, I can get x train dot shape. That's that's our input. We have 8,171 training examples and 64 inputs. So let's create uh, an input uh, layer from Keras tf dot Keras dot layers. No, no, sorry, tf dot Keras dot input, and we'll include the shape. Uh, this will be a vector of length 64. But I can just give that by x dot shape sub one, which will just target this value. And then um, I was experimenting with this a little. Uh, the normal architecture of just two hidden layers, two uh, dense layers with 64 activations and a ReLU activation function, um, seemed to not be performing up to par. Uh, it was giving us uh, decent accuracy, but I found that we were able to get better accuracy with more neurons and some dropout layers. So I'm going to use 1,024 neurons, and then we're going to have a dropout layer after with a 20% dropout. This will help uh, reduce overfitting. And I'm going to pass x into that. Oh, also the input should come into here. And then I'm going to duplicate this and just have one more round of that. x is coming in now. So it's going to go through the dense layer, then to the dropout layer, then to another dense layer, and then to another dropout layer. And then we'll have our output. And that will have four activations with a softmax activation. And this is going to give us four different probability estimates for each class. So the one with the highest probability will be the classification. So now model is going to be tf.keras.model. I'm going to pass in the inputs and the outputs. And we're going to compile it. So I'm going to use an atom optimizer. Um, for loss, we'll use uh, cr sparse categorical cross entropy. So it's just a generalization of binary class entropy, cross entropy for a multi-class scenario. And then metrics is accuracy. That's all we'll need. And then batch size. Uh, let's do 32. And then I'm going to train for 50 epochs, and I'm going to use the reduce learning rate on plateau um, callback function. So when you're using that callback, you just have to train for a sufficient number of epochs so that it plateaus properly. I'll show you the the uh, graph for what I mean. Um, so now we're going to fit it and store it, the results in history, and I'm going to train it on the training set. So x train, y train, give it a validation split of 20%. Epochs will be epochs. Batch size will be batch size. I'll usually include batch size first. Oh, 
Okay, and then we'll include that callback function. So tf.keras.callbacks.reduce learning rate on plateau. All right. So I'm going to go and train it, and then I'm just going to start plotting the results in the meantime. Uh, so let's create a matplotlib figure. So I'm going to start a new figure with a figure size of uh, 16 by 10. And we're going to plot two plots on top of the same figure. One on, well, they're both going to have the same x-axis value. So why don't I just copy this and then on the x-axis, we're going to have a range of the number of epochs. So we're going to be plotting the loss over the number of epochs. So x has epochs, and then y is going to be history dot history sub loss, except the second one will be validation loss. And then I'm going to include some uh, some labels here as well. So it's going to be loss, but this one will be training. And this one will be validation. Then we can give it some, uh, the, the, give the plot some, some x and y uh, axis labels. Epoch on the x, loss on the y, and then we can show the legend and give it a title, which will be loss over time. All right, and we'll show it after that. Uh, it's not done training, so I'm just going to move on. After that, we're going to evaluate the model on the test set to see how it does. And then let's get some predictions. So y true is going to be the real uh, values of our test set, uh, the, the, the true ra true labels. And that's just given by y test. So I'm just going to turn y test into a NumPy array. And then y pred is going to be our predicted values. So if you look uh, at this, it outputs, um, the, the model outputs four different probabilities between 0 and 1. So I want to get the, use the index of the maximum probability as the label classification. So to do that, um, we can take model.predict x test. That will give us the, uh, for each test example, it will give us a probability, uh, it will give us four probabilities. And then I can take the um, the argmax of each set of four probabilities to give us the label. So if you don't know what argmax is, it's a great function. NumPy.argmax takes in some list, uh, let's say some some list like this, and you can see the maximum. If we just did NumPy.max, it would be 79. But if we do argmax, it'll give us 3 because the index of 79 is 3. So this way we can we can get uh, let's say we had four different probabilities uh, you can see that the highest probability is in 2 and I know these don't sum to 1 but it doesn't matter. So we can get the label by getting the argmax of each set of probabilities. So this will give us um, a bunch of different sets of probabilities. So we just want to use a lambda function on it. So we're going to map a lambda function to it. It's going to take an nx, which is a single set of four probabilities, and return the argmax of x, um, which will be the label classification as an integer. Okay, and then uh, we're going to turn this map object into a list afterwards. Uh, and then let's turn that into a numpy array. Actually, yeah, I'm not sure. Can you, uh, let me see if I can just do it without turning it into a list. It's an extra step we don't need. Um, y pred. No, it didn't work. I have to turn it into a list first. Okay. So now y pred looks like this. It's an array of ones, twos, uh, zeros, ones, twos, and threes, and y test looks the same way. Well, why true is the NumPy array form. You can see they're both the same format. Uh, so now that we have these two, uh, the true values and the predicted values, we can get a uh, confusion matrix. Uh, but why don't we plot this now that the training is finished? Uh, you can see the loss 
came down, training loss constantly decreasing. The validation loss a little rickety, but eventually it plateaued due to the callback function we used. And if we evaluate the model, we get an accuracy of 95%, which is very good. Um, with the without using these dropout layers and only using 64 neurons a piece, I was only able to get an accuracy of about 91%. So uh, this is very good. Um, and why don't we plot a confusion matrix? So CM is going to be our confusion matrix, and I'm getting this confusion matrix function from sklearn. I'm going to pass in y true and y pred. So it's going to compare them, and then for each class, it's going to give us the um, positive predictions in each class and the negative predictions. Uh, let me just show you. Okay, so uh, let's create a new matplotlib figure now with a fig size of 6 by 6. And then I'm going to create a heat map using Seaborn, uh, passing in the confusion matrix, turning on annotations so that we can see the number of, of uh, classifications. And I'm just including format G so that we can get uh, in, it won't be in scientific notation uh, when we do when it displays the numbers. And then for the color map, I'm going to use blues. And for the color bar, I'm just going to turn off the color bar. All right. And then I'm going to on the uh, I'm going to give it some label axes. The x will be the predicted values, and the y will be the actual values. And then we can give it a title. Confusion matrix. All right, let's take a look. And you can see our model did extraordinarily well. Um, for each class, there are very few misclassifications. We have 800 or so in every single class, and the false predictions are very scarce. So um, this, is, this looks like a really nice fit to our data. Uh, let's also get a classification report. Just print it out. I'm using the classification report from sklearn. Passing in uh, y true and y pred again. And you can see the precision and recall scores in every single class are really, really good. And our accuracy overall is 95%, as we saw. Um, this is just, uh, I think, as a, a very good fit. Um, and that will conclude today's video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content, and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.